There's a lot of evidence that drawing is really um, beneficial for student learning. And this, the article in Science that we've just published has really identified about five different distinct reasons why drawing helps students learn. Um, so there's student engagement. Uh, they engage better if they're actively drawing. Uh, it helps with their reasoning. It helps them uh, understand the standard ideas of science, the concepts of science. There's been a, a lot of uh, talk in Australia and internationally about the declining numbers of students going into science um, at tertiary level and even at, at secondary level. And so the engagement of students in science is an important thing. And so what we're looking at is finding ways that teachers can work with kids to engage them in ideas to improve their learning. They're very enthusiastic about, um, about the approach, about the way it engages students with science ideas, about the quality of discussions they're having, about um, the understandings they're, they're achieving. And we, we've shown this with test results um, and, and analysing their, their workbooks. Um, that in fact, students seem to be learning at a deeper level and also learning the way that models and drawings work in science. And so we think we're capturing a more authentic science practice than your traditional way of teaching and learning science. So for instance, um, we've had students working at primary level where they're looking at animals in their school grounds, for instance, so the teachers talk through, well, how are you going to um, represent which animals are there. Uh, we've had kids modelling uh, animal movement um, and uh, teachers have been quite charmed when we show them the, the students work at how that, that the messiness that is characteristic of science knowledge building is built into these students uh, notebooks as they use their drawings to to develop their understandings. We've had some really nice examples of kids drawing particles in a process of evaporation of water and teachers work with them to do this in, in different ways like uh, they use um, physical models like beads, they use role models and what is powerful about it is that even though students are working towards uh, an understanding of the science formal representation they do it in different ways and so they're making their own decisions and so you've got that nice balance between their own imagination and creativity and an understanding of the, the formal representations that scientists use. Um, and that, that is continued in, in secondary school. We, we have teachers working with um, looking at substances and um, particle ideas around substances. So students imaginatively recreate what they think the bonding arrangements would be like in order to explain particular um, characteristics of substances like elasticity of a rubber band, for instance. Uh, what, what we found is that when they go through this process, they, they understand the role of models in science. They've made animations, for instance, and they've done role models. In astronomy, we, we've had students modelling, um, using role models, but also talking explicitly about the many models you use to understand night and day, to understand the seasons and so on. And so we found that kids get quite sophisticated in, say, critiquing standard models, um, in, in understanding that what you get in textbooks is often only a partial representation. And so they become, I think, uh, much more discerning about the way we, we generate knowledge in science.